Hello everyone, this is Deb Joy Sneak from Delight of My Art. My face camera is not working today, but hello. So happy to have you with me today. Um, we're doing mystery stamping today, and today was a fun one because we're using a whole 12 by 12 of DSP and a whole 8.5 by 11 of a neutral piece. So I can't wait to show you what we're doing today, but let's go ahead and uh, get started here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you're watching live, please make sure that you say hello and share. And thank you, Tony, for sharing. And uh, we also have free tutorials every Tuesday. So in the description here, you can see to join my email list. I would love to uh, connect with you there. And we also have this streaming on YouTube and in our Facebook group, Stamp with Delight. I'm also on Facebook at Delight of My Art too. So it gets a little bit confusing, but I would love for you to um, join me in all of those different locations. So thank you so much for joining in. And if you see anything that you like today, please make sure that you go to orderwithdeb.com if you don't already have a demonstrator or if you're not a demonstrator yourself already. Um, and you can get uh, all of these materials to play with. We are having a DSP sale today, which is why I'm playing with a whole sheet of it. This is one reason to use up your stash and you'll have so much fun doing it. So hello, Sharon. All right. So if you didn't get this sheet, this is um, emailed to you every Monday. Um, I tried to get it out um, by uh, a early afternoon, but sometimes I take until the evening. So please be patient with me. I do have four small kids. Well, they're kind of getting bigger, but I do have four kids. They're home for the summer and things get a little busy, but we do have this also posted in the Facebook group, Stamp with Delight, and then also emailed to you. So another reason to be on my email list. All right, so let's get down to business. I have some other diagrams here behind this sheet too. Today is going to be fun. I actually am doing this one because I had to make a few of these for my husband's work and you'll find out why in just a minute. So let's go ahead and start with the most boring piece. <laughs> We're just gonna use a piece of white. Let's say I have a, have a scrap here. This is a whole sheet of eight and a half by 11 and I'm going to have you cut this with me um, according to this diagram that I created and actually the, the directions that I was using um, she did it a little differently so I think this diagram is actually a little bit better so this is what we're going to be doing so if you want to take a screenshot right now but I will be sharing this on my group stamp with delight um, but we're going to be slicing this at three and a half and then again a strip that's three and a quarter so these first numbers here and then the last strip, we're going to be cutting that down to one and a half. So let's go ahead and do that together. So again, we're going to go three and a half. So we're on the short side here, eight and a half by 11, or sorry, eight and a half at the top, three and a half. So we'll just put this sheet to the side for now. We're going to do our next piece at three and one quarter. Hi, Vesta. And then this last piece, we're just going to do one and a half. So that leaves us with this tiny little strip. You could use this for sentiments or uh, just go ahead and recycle this. So this is a nice little tiny piece, about three eighths of an inch or so. Um, we don't need to keep that. Set it along aside this one and a half piece for the end. But let's get out these first two strips that we did. So we have this strip that's so three and a half. Let's start with that one. I'll put this one to the side. That's This one is this one right here. So we're going to cut this and we're going to turn it and we're going to cut two and three quarters. We're going to do that twice. Two and three quarters. And again, another two and three quarters. So that we have two of those pieces. Hello, Virginia. And then the next piece, we're just going to cut this one at four and three quarters. So this was that whole first strip, three and a half. So we are left with three pieces. Again, this one is three and a half. 
by two and three quarters, same as this one. And this one is three and a half by four and three quarters. So we'll go ahead and put those to the side and cut our next piece. Are you guys so intrigued? <laughs> I hope that you're intrigued. I thought this was so much fun. All right, so this one, this is our three and a quarter inch wide piece. We're gonna put this alongside at the top and we're gonna cut it at four and a half. And we're gonna do that again at four and a half. So we have two pieces here that are three and one quarter by four and a half. Put those to the side and this little leftover piece, you can actually use your circle punch and we're gonna be able to use this on uh, part of the card. Uh, one and three quarter inch circle punch. So I'm just going to punch my circle right out of this piece. So we're using so many different pieces out of this. So this is our scrap right here from that whole piece. We get this piece that we cut a circle out of, this piece, and this little piece, which is actually a great sentiment piece, by the way. You can save that for, for later, but that's all from that whole sheet of paper. We're going to keep our trimmer out here because we're going to be doing some scoring. Here, if you need another screen grab of this sheet here, we'll just leave that there for a second. But we'll leave our trimmer here. We're going to be pulling in the DSP in just a second. Okay, so here is the DSP that I chose. This is from that fishing, let's go fishing paper. And I thought this was so fun. I thought it looked like a map, what well, it does. And on the other side, there's some water. I actually don't have this stamp set. It's very cute, but my wish list is so incredibly long that I can't get everything. So I'm going to pair this with something else that I do have that's still current. So um, since this is kind of directional, and this side is not. I'm going to um, orient this so that the top is at the top. And I'm going to flip it over to do our first score line. So straight over, this is the top of the design on the other side, right here. And we're gonna put this in the trimmer. And you should be picking um, a piece that you could have, you could see both sides and still like these actually don't really coordinate so much, but I think they will once I put some decorations on there. Um, all right, so we'll take our arm out too because we're gonna need that. So we're gonna go score. Again, the top of the design from the back side is at the top of the trimmer. We're gonna score it four inches. Best is intrigued, I know, right? <laughs> and eight inches, so four and eight. Again, these, um, Measurements for the scoring are in the description here, but I will have a diagram for when we cut this. So, okay, we've done four and eight. Now I'm gonna take this top and we're gonna move it to the left side, okay? So put it over here. And this is where we're going to score at three and a half. And eight and three quarters. So again, that was four and eight. Turn it to the left, three and a half, and eight and three quarters. So I'm gonna take this, here's the top of my design. I'm gonna turn that back towards the top here and flip it back over. So now we should have nine quadrants or sections to work with. And I'm just going to do some folding on all of those so that you'll be able to see the lines better that way too. Because we're gonna do some cutting near these lines so we do need to be able to see them. I didn't score it super hard because sometimes you'll cut through your DSP. So I'm gonna fold that real gently. I don't get any wrong creases. Well, I could have scored it a little harder, but I didn't want to break it. <laughs> okay, so you can kind of see that we have now it looks like real like a real map, right? This paper is so cool. <laughs> All right, so we've got 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine little sections here. And now I'm going to get out my diagram. And this might be where you've seen this before, but I did make my own diagram. This is what we're going to be doing here. So again, if you want to take a screen grab picture of this, but I will be sharing this in the group Stamp with Delight. We're going to be removing, first of all, this top left quadrant. So let's just go ahead and do that together. So that's this one over here. And I'll get my scissors here. And I actually, I think I will fold this both ways on the line so that we can really see these lines. I'll just fold it the opposite way. Okay, so again, top left quadrant, we're going to take that one away. And I'm actually going to cut um, so that I cut away this score line. I'm just going to cut slightly to the right of that. While oh, this paper is a little bit tricky to see the lines on it. But I'll do my best. And since it looks like a map, if it looks a little tattered and I don't get it straight, it's probably going to be fine, right? <laughs> And again, I'm going to cut a little bit to the left of this score line. So I cut that score line completely away. After I finish cutting this one, we'll turn it right side up so you can still tell which part of the diagram we're on. So this piece, don't throw this away because we can use this again on another piece or on this piece that we're using today, depending on what you want to do with it. OK, so here we are. We've removed this quadrant up here. I'll bring my diagram back out. Right now, we're going to be cutting along this one, stopping right here. And we're going to be making this, uh, we're going to be cutting on both sides of this score line so that the gap, there's a gap there. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, actually, before we do that, you see this black bar on the right? We're going to snip off the tiniest bit off of this side before I forget, because it is important. Because if you watch, if we were to fold both of these sides in, they don't lay flat because of how much paper is there. So we're just going to cut off the tiniest bit here. This is the side we want to be working on, the side that if there's a pattern and there's an up way, this is how you would follow these directions. So let's get my trimmer back out real quick and just trim off the very right sliver of this. Just a hair. And that's going to make all the difference. Okay, let's put this away. So now we're going to go into quadrant three here, right here. And we're going to cut along this line right here. So I'm just going to turn it so I can reach it easier. But again, we're going to go to the right and the left of this score line so that we give ourselves some of the wiggle room that we need because we're going to be folding this. It's going to be a little bit, a bit of a bulky thing, but it's so fun. I think all my projects are fun. What do you guys think? <laughs> Maybe I'm a little biased, but I think you guys are having fun. <laughs> All right, so here is our piece that we're removing from here. You can see it's a it's a good gap, right? And the, here's the piece that I removed. It's probably a sixteenth of an inch or so. But that way, when we fold it over, um, it's not interfering with any of these other pieces. Okay, now we're gonna do this side over here. So way down here, we're going to be cutting the same thing. We're going to be cutting on both sides of the score line up to this first or this bottom score line. So that's right here. So just to the right and just to the left. And just snip that piece off. And then we've got one more cut to do. And I find that this is actually easier to do in the trimmer. 
um, but you could also do it with maybe a ruler but we're going to be doing a diagonal cut so from these two fold lines where you have a cross here we're going to cut from the corner up to here but if you're using the trimmer just make sure that you don't come into the corner with the blade because you could crumple up the corner so let me show you how this is going to work it's a bit of a tight squeeze <laughs> but as long as we can see this little piece i'm actually going to put a pencil mark at this corner because it's going to be pretty hard to see. I could see it on all of the ones that I did for the extra samples and of course I can't do it for the one that we're doing on the screen. So I'm just going to I'm just going to put a little pencil mark there. <laughs> you can barely see that anyway. There's my pencil mark and I want to be able to see that in the track here. So since we cut this quadrant out now it fits in the top here a little bit better because we want to be able to fit our corner down here so the corner down here needs to go in the track and so does this piece this little dot that we made so this is where it might get a little bit tricky to line up but you want that pencil line in the track and then you also need to make sure that the bottom point is also in the track so but I feel like this is going to be straighter than if I were to do it with scissors. But you can totally wing it with scissors. All right, again, my blade's way down at the bottom here. I don't want to cut up because I'm going to crinkle my corner. So I'm going to bring my blade up to, whoo, up to this dot and then come down. Oh, that worked beautifully. Yes. See? Okay. Now we are done. And I can erase my pencil line. Probably wouldn't even see that on this whole piece anyway. All right, now we're done with the trimmer, I think. <laughs> okay, so now this looks just like our diagram, right? We've got this piece removed. Um, we've got this gap here and this gap here, and we've got a cut line here. This piece we're going to cut out with that same circle punch that we did earlier. One and three quarters, you could use whatever whichever one you want, but you're gonna just gonna give it a notch, try to have it an even amount on both sides of the punch. You can do up to halfway or a little bit less than halfway down into the paper. But I think, and save this piece, cause we're gonna use this too. There's not very much waste on this one today. It's kind of a fun one. Oh, Vista thinks my projects are fun. Thank you. <laughs> All right, one more thing. This piece over here, we're going to rip this edge right here. So let's turn this around. I'm right-handed, so that's why I'm doing it this way. I'm just going to tear it up so that the white part of the inside of the paper is kind of exposed. And I'm going to go maybe three quarters of an inch or so, just kind of, kind of make it a little bit of a wavy line. Just like that. Ooh, that kind of looks like a little ocean wave, doesn't it? That's cool. And you can use this on something, but you don't need to. I think I threw my, my pieces away. Okay, so now, if you can tell, we're making pockets. So this piece is just going to come up here. This piece is going to go over here. This piece is going to come up here. And this piece is here. Isn't this so much fun? <laughs> I just get so excited. Okay, so we can go ahead and glue our pockets in now. So on this one with the notch, we're going to just put glue on this line here and here. And I'm going to use liquid glue because it's going to be the thinnest, but don't go too close to the edge because you don't want your glue to, you know, seep out or anything. Where's my fold? Go up to the fold. So I'll just fold that up. Give that a press for a couple seconds. That looks so cool. All right, this bottom triangle, we're just doing this bottom edge right here. Did you guys stock up on paper for the paper sale? It's 15% off until the end of the month, and that's only two more days after today, right? 
pretty crazy. This paper um, was not on my radar and I did not get the stamp set, but it is a lot of fun. I mean, look at this piece. This looks like a treasure map. So on this side, we're gonna do this side over here. And then this piece, again, we're gonna do both of these edges. A Little bit of a smoggy day today with all of the smoke coming from the Canada fires. So we're having a nice day inside today. Praying for those Canadians and anybody dealing with bad weather. All right, so now here comes the point where we're going to bring in all of those neutral pieces that we cut earlier. So these are going to be our pieces that will fit in all of these little pockets. So these two smallest pieces will fit in the top and the bottom. Careful with this one because you ripped that one so be a little gentle with that one. This one goes down here. There's one bigger one. Let's see, this one? No, these are the side ones. This is the bigger one. Where did this one come from? Was that just sitting on my desk? I don't know. I think so. <laughs> it's just an extra piece laying around. All right, so these pieces slip in the side. And then this piece goes in the middle. So let's go ahead and decorate this. I didn't do that ahead of time because we needed to cut it together. So I'm gonna decorate this with my pecan pie. And I felt like this really went well with the On the Ocean stamp set and uh, bundle with the dies and everything. It's so piratey and treasury and with the map and the water, I thought it went really well. So we're gonna do, hoping this year is full of adventure and excitement on the middle piece. And again, I'm not going to glue it down before I stamp. You always stamp first and then glue because if you mess up, paper's got two sides and you just stamp on the other side, right? That's cute. Now I do think I will add a little wheel to the bottom of that one. I think that's cute. Okay, so that's on the inside here. Now with these pieces, you could use these as photo mats and turn this into an album, or you can use it like we did. Um, my husband's work needed a place for lots of people to sign their names on a card. And I thought, well, this, you could bring it out, have people sign on multiple sides on so many of these fun little uh, tuck in things. So there's so many different spots to sign your name for a large group too. So if you have a birthday that you need the whole family to sign, this is perfect for that. So you can do little decorations. You could have words on all of these. Um, I will decorate those probably later, but we will do the whole outside. Okay. So we haven't used these pieces yet. This piece that we cut out of the notch is going to go on the top of this little pullout, because that's fun. It's a fun little add-on and we didn't have any waste there. So make that even from left to right. Oh, we didn't glue that in. We'll glue this piece in. center that in that area there and then this is how you're going to fold it up so the left no the right side goes in because we trimmed off that side on this side right so now when we close this you can still see the seam here and there's plenty of room for this side to close isn't that nice so that's why we did that 
So press that pretty flat so that this side can go. And then the top is the last one. This is a little bit bulky, but it does fold up and still fit into a regular, let's see, pulling out an envelope, into a regular envelope, medium envelope. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, so here's what we're going to do with that long piece that we cut off the side. This is your belly band, and then you are also supposed to, we cut that little circle, right? You're also supposed to have a color to match your DSP, a two inch circle. So I have a navy blue one here. I think that'll go well. And then this piece is our belly band. Okay. Again, my favorite tip with belly bands. And if you haven't heard me say this, this is going to change your life. <laughs> if I can find my bone folder. Okay. Important to have a bone folder. This is a really fun tip here. All right. So we're going to have. I'm going to put my seam for my belly band in the front because we're going to cover it with our label here. So don't crease this part, or you can crease it, but don't, um, you know, bur uh, burnish your fold here. We're just going to pull it kind of tight, but it's not actually, um, I'm not going to press it. Then I'm going to slip my balloon folder in here. And come over and kind of cut this. It's a little bit too long. The other directions you were only working with an eight and a half and 11 or an eight and a half inch long piece instead of 11 inches. I felt like it wasn't quite long enough to go all the way around here. So that's why I redid those directions there. All right. Now did I trim off enough to cover? I think so. I think I'm going to trim it just a little bit more. So with the bone folder in there, we're going to close our belly band and that should give us enough give in order for this belly band to be snug enough, but not fall off and be tight enough. Um, yeah, snug enough and tight enough and loose enough <laughs> to move. Okay, so I'm going to take my Stampin' Seal Plus and on one side that's Underneath, we're going to go on the edge, and on this side, we're going to go on the edge also. So, if one side's closed and one side's open, you go on the edges, and then we can close those together. And don't pull too hard, just kind of a like that. So, now it should have I'm getting caught on the edge here because there's paper there, but it should be good. Yeah. It slides pretty good, but it doesn't it doesn't fall off. So that's the trick. But use your bone folder when you make your belly bands and it'll give you the perfect amount of tension. All right, so we want you are a treasure on this piece in pecan pie. Not sure where I wanted that saying because I don't know what else I have all these fun little pieces from the set so I'm not sure what I'm doing with these yet <laughs> but I knew I wanted to use them on something okay so I've got this ship I don't know if I want to put that on the inside isn't that so pretty you are a treasure we could have it just like that on there maybe we've got a treasure map I did I just ripped a little kind of square out of uh, crumb cake, I think. <laughs> Gosh, that's cute. I got the cutie little pirate map. Oh my, or pirate flag. So stinking cute. I got some wheels and this um, little, little guy here. A skull and crossbones. Tip with this too. If you put a black dimensional behind there, his eyes are black and, you, and it's all popped up and everything's good to go. So pretty cool. I feel like that should go there, but this is too light. Hmm. Maybe I'll just decorate this later. Oh, we'll do this. Something like that. Anyway. So I will decorate that later and you'll see the pictures probably on the video title there. But I wanted to show you my alternatives too. Are you guys having fun? 
I have two alternatives and I've made two for my husband's work and I already gave those away. So <laughs> I think I took a picture of one of them. I'll share that too. Um, but here's that one. And then here's the next one. We got a for you. And this is using the layering leaves punch and um, stamp set. And the fun paper here. Oh my goodness, I love this one. So I thought that one turned out really cute and fun. Could be any occasion. And I guess you could pick a different color band if that didn't go, if the, the neutral didn't go. But I felt like it went pretty good with these. And here's one using the Zany Zoo. Isn't he so cute? I just put some sequins on there and I colored one of them green because we have the gold and the blue and the pink that all come together. So I just colored one of the blue ones green to match the balloons. And then this one's so cute. I did decorate this one. So we've got something great to celebrate you. And then I just put confetti on all of the little pieces that go. And you can kind of see when you pull this out, you can see all of the fun little critters there. And it just so happened that up in this left quadrant was a full uh, raccoon for me to die cut. So I didn't even have to stamp that. I just, I did color him with blends, but he turned out so cute. Oh, Tony, you got all the basics done? Good. I can't wait to see yours. So those are my samples. I hope that you guys had fun. I can't wait to see what I do with this one. <laughs> all right. Let me know which one is your favorite. And I hope that you play along and you can, I will be making a post at 2 p.m. tomorrow um, at Stamp with Delight on Facebook. And you can share your creations there. I just ask that you use mostly Stampin' Up! products as that is encouraging to everybody watching. And um, you can purchase any of those materials through me if you don't already have a demonstrator. But if you do, go ahead and stay loyal to them. That is just fine. Thank you so much for playing along with me. I love sharing with you. And I hope that you have a fabulous day. All right, guys. Have a good one.